Hello, good morning, good morning, good morning. I think we are here. I apologize. I'm not sure. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to apologize. I'm excited to think that the technical problem that Zoom might present has already presented itself because I've been here waiting for everybody to arrive. And if you could hear me, if you can see me, if you are here with me in our Zoom squares, could you send me a note in the chat to let me know that I'm not just speaking to myself in this room in Zoom land? Now, they're super. So, very good. Thank you. I'm going to do two things right now. I'm going to turn off the chat in uh, Zoom. And because, and I'm going to talk about why we're doing this, but the chat that we're going to use is actually the chat in uh, CourseLink. In the, if you go to your CourseLink homepage, some of you are already there, so hello, and thank you for helping me figure out what the problem was. Those of you who are in the CourseLink chat, you'll see in the uh, menu screen, in the welcome screen, that there's a bar up at the top, a uh, taskbar, and one of them says chat. If you go into that chat, you'll see today's date. Click in there, and I see. Bunches of you running into the room. That's amazing. And awesome. I will do that as well. I apologize for this. Like I said, it's good to get all these things out of the way. There we go. Okay, so you should see captions. Uh, and hi there. Welcome. Happy New Year. Um, my name is Alex Smith. I'm one part of the teaching team uh, for Zoology 2700. It's winter 2023 edition. Um, Sherry Hinks is going to be running the labs. You'll get to meet Sherry and the team of TAs next week uh, when your labs start. But we're really excited uh, to be here with you together. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is kind of the outline of the course, give, probably hopefully answer some of the questions that the course outline may not already have answered, uh, or maybe some questions that the course outline has left you with. Um, and then at the end of it, at the end of today's lecture, I'll give you some of my ooh, earthquakes about some of my thoughts about why this is like the absolute coolest course, why this is the course that where you want to be. It's certainly the course where I want to be. Um, I see some of the questions popping up in the chat. I've got multiple monitors here. Some of those questions I'm going to uh, come to. I see somebody's asked in the Zoom chat, uh, where's the, yeah, and just, so thank you for helping each other there. Uh, admit people. Um, and I see some questions about lecture slides. I'll come to that. And if I haven't asked them here, and I'll, I've given myself some reminders to keep my head down and look into that chat. But um, we should get going. Uh, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is thank you for drawing. Hold off for two seconds. I'm going to clear these or keep your place in your mind. Uh, and I see there's a clear winner uh, in the X's and O's. So I'm going to clear all the drawings. And I'm going to say, I'm not going to start every lecture like this um, explicitly, but I think it's a good thing that your courses all do it and probably a good thing implicitly that you consider it when you're starting your day, when you're starting your classes, when you're starting your professional career, wherever you are. You're sitting, if you're joining us from Canada, I am, I'm in Guelph, uh, but we're sitting on traditional unceded and treaty lands of First Nations, Inuit, and Metis. Your University of Guelph sits in particularly on the unceded lands of the Between the Lakes Treaty Number 3, which is the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. And that's part of the dish with one spoon, which is a covenant between indigenous nations to live peaceably in the territories of these great lakes. Today, of course, this land is home to many First Nations, Inuit and Metis. But it's important to take a moment out to recognize that our teaching and our learning and our research, the jobs that we do, the lives that we live, if we're, we're lucky enough to be here, it's our responsibility to ensure that whatever our activities are, that they honor and respect indigenous peoples. And if you are a settler, that you listen. An acknowledgement takes a moment out of a small moment out of our day to remind you of your collective responsibility to the people in the places where we live and we learn, but an acknowledgement on its own is not enough. And uh, there's some, there's a QR code that where if you're interested in, in learning more about those kinds of things, um, you can delve into that. So today, this is, uh, we've already got through this, but if you're here with us today, this is thinking about the chat. This is looking at Caramel. Caramel, who is, I'll do the obligatory Zoom. Since we're talking about the shop, this is Caramel the cat. She is 16. She's lived here for a very long time. And 
She's magnificent. Uh, but if you're looking for the chat, of course, go to the home page. You'll see chat. And then once you've logged into chat, you'll see a particular date and a, and a link. Now, that link, this is the reason. This is the opportunity for me to explain why we're doing this in uh, course link as opposed to using the Zoom chat. Yeah. In short, it's because we can uh, archive these things. Now, archiving them means that you'll be able to go back and click on that little hash at the end of the today's title for today's Zoom, and you'll see a number of different iterations. You just click on that, look for past sessions, and then you can jump into the one that has the most entries. That'll be the live one throughout the class. And then you're there, and if there's been something clever or some questions that we've talked about, some discussion throughout the lecture, throughout the class, you're able to uh, revisit those and benefit from all of the wisdom. Um, now, just in case there's no bias, to get at least 50% of the non-human vertebrates of this house out of the way early on. This is Lily. Lily is a miniature Dachshund. She's also... She's 11, uh, Caramel's 16. Uh, you'll also, the younger generation, Kevin the cat and Doug the dog, who are three and two respectively, uh, probably you'll get a chance to see them throughout the year. So that's the sha, that's the chat. I'm excited about this class. One of my principal kind of learning outcomes, and we'll come to those later on, is to infect you with enthusiasm for the things that we share the planet with, or, I think flip that, the things that share their planet with us. This is a quote in the upper left-hand corner from a, a zoologist, a myrmecologist, a biodiversity scientist named Ed Wilson, or E.O. Wilson, when he wrote a long time ago in the 80s about the importance of the little things that run the world. And by thinking about, by talking about little things that run the world, what he was talking about were the things in this class, the little things. Most of life is not named. Most of life is an invertebrate. Most of life doesn't see the way the world the way that you and I do. In fact, it doesn't see it at all. It smells it and it tastes it. And so these little things that run the world, uh, it would be such a shame to me if you could get training as a zoologist, as a marine and freshwater biologist, as a, as a wildlife biologist, as a biodiversity scientist, without taking a, a dedicated moment to celebrate the diversity of life. The diversity of animal life is this class. I also want to take a moment to talk about Ed Wilson because he passed away within the last kind of 13 to 15 months. And I got a chance there. He is there under that circle. And this is a meeting of myrmecologists in uh, Harvard a bunch of years ago. Uh, maybe you can tell if you zoom in at that later on, you can see how much hair is on the top of my head or how much gray is not in my face. But I had the honor of meeting him uh, once, and I certainly appreciate that. He, in writing just before he died, this is him a year or so before he died, he talked about the fact that in the broader sense of biodiversity science, the science that studies species and the diversity of life across the planet, so inherently, I'm going to argue to you, the, the discipline that studies invertebrates, we need more studies that are we, we need both aerial surveillance, like mapping and high end kind of modeling of, of patterns of diversity across the time, but we need what he called boots on the ground. And that's his bias and mine as a terrestrial uh, invertebrate scientist. But we'll say boots on the ground and flippers in the water, in freshwater and marine systems. And so in taking this moment to think about Ed's work, and about this plea from this kind of uh, recently departed generation of scientists, I want to take uh, a moment to argue for the fact that you, by taking this class, by putting this within your major or by putting this in, especially if you're adding it to a course or a degree where it's not part of a, a, not part of a required course list, this is you. You're putting boots on the ground, and that excites me. So I'm glad uh, to welcome you here. And Sherry and I and team are glad to welcome you uh, and share our enthusiasms for the invertebrate world with you. Now, one of the things when we talk, of, I've mentioned this already, the scale of life that we're talking about here. When we're talking about, this is a table from your text, from the Brusca text, and it is an under, any of these numbers are under estimates, but the table is roughly correct in that there are, uh, uh, one and a half to two million named animal species. 96% of those are invertebrates. 84% um, of them occur only in one invertebrate phyla. 
phylum in the arthropods, 87 within two within the arthropods and the mollusks. This is an incredibly diverse task that we're setting ourselves up for to talk about invertebrates in one term, in one course. In fact, if you were going to scale your biology experience to the diversity of life, and so let's, let's take that kind of thought experiment, back of the napkin, flip it over and say the course contains 96% of all animals, your degree roughly contains 40 courses, so if we're going to scale it properly, in your final semester, January of your fourth year, you would get to take two classes that weren't this class. Right? So celebrate that. Celebrate that as an expression of diversity and celebrate that as, a, as an, an effect. Uh, you don't have to spend that much time with me and with Sherry. But remember it in terms of the fact that expressed as a meme, the last table expressed as a meme, there is in uh, the invertebrate species that we don't know yet, and there is a small proportion of the invertebrate species we know. And we've, uh, biologists, evolutionary biologists, morphological uh, physiologists, uh, ecologists, morphological zoologists, we're qu clever people. And we build on the work of clever people going backwards through time. So we know a lot. Uh, but I want this to be one of the contexts within which you consider all of the things that we know is that um, Colbert would call this the nerd zone. Um, it has to be kind of pair. It has to be set in the picture frame in the framework of there's so much that we don't know. There's so much work that needs to be done and it needs to be done by you. And it needs to be done by you because we don't know it. And because, of course, all of your lives, are, all of our lives are taking place during the Anthropocene uh, and the largest biodiversity crisis uh, since uh, volcanoes and uh, meteorites decided to uh, stress out the life of the planet. Okay, so 2700. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? I mentioned this already, the course format, a bit of a, the tech test here in, the, in Zoom, uh, some of the learning outcomes, and then my argument for why invertebrate, why would you take this class? This is us, um, Sherry. Uh, let me look, uh, Sherry. Sherry's here. I'm going to say, I think I just asked you to unmute, Sherry. If you're able to, do you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I am glad to be part of the teaching team along with Alex and our amazing TAs, and I look forward to seeing you next week in lab. Awesome. I sprung that on Sherry, so thank you. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Uh, so, and Emma and Jared, you will meet uh, in the labs uh, as they begin next week. So, hooray. We're, we're excited about that. Now, uh, a word about the lectures. As you know already from the course outline, we're going to be meeting in this Zoom environment. Um, they're going to be synchronous. You get the most out of them if you attend synchronously, like at the same time, like as you're doing right now. But if you're watching us from the future, hello, I think things are good because we're recording them and I'll post them on YouTube and those links will be uh, embedded into your course link. Very occasionally, so if so if something comes up, health-wise, life-wise, whatever, you'll be able to see and review any of these lectures. Um, occasionally, there'll be like a pre-lecture video to watch before class. I'll announce that on course link. That might happen out of uh, I don't know, one or a handful of times, fewer than fewer than this many times throughout the throughout the term. We've talked about the fact that the Zoom chat is not open as long as I remember to close it, uh, but we're using the chat feature in course link. Uh, and the labs and the lectures are really intertwined, uh, all right, that, that each of them, that we're going to introduce things, uh, so the pace will sometimes change, sometimes you'll get a, an introduction in the lab, often in the lecture, but each complements the other, complements and extends the materials in the text. Um, and there's a note, there's an answer to uh, questions that have come up already, the slide PDFs for this. You get all of them. They're not redacted. They're not kind of subsampled. They're not anything, but you get them after we share this time together. And I do that for a couple of reasons. And none of those reasons include me being a jerk or not appreciating uh, the fact or empathizing with the fact that note taking can be hard. But that's actually one of the reasons that we do it. Note taking is a critical part of learning. And it means that in doing that without the slides, you have to actively listen and decide what's important. Um, when taking notes by hand. And then kind of on a related, uh, I'm gonna delve into, this is actually not invertebrate research, this is human research. But there's the comparison between taking notes by hand by writing them out, I'm a lefty, 
so even in my chicken scratch. Note taking is critical to learning. So this is a comparison of, of uh, testing based on a large cohort of students where some of the class had done, uh, had typed out, had just used their laptop to record their, their notes and the other part of the class were taking notes by hand, by longhand. Factually, they got the un indistinguishable grades. But as soon as you got into conceptual material, and we will do that, that's part of my, that's one of my goals in setting up the class like this, and I'll unpack some of that in a second, but the, the, the progress um, and the success attained by those that were doing things in longhand, that were distilling instead of just recording, was much greater. So this is um, probably who you want to be. And so that's my encouragement to you to, to use uh, longhand and to stay along with me. Now, I am going to maximize this other, I see one question that I just answered, lecture slides, this is me. Um, yes, like toxoplasmosis, I, that is exactly the kind of infection that I'm looking to do. Um, very good, lots of enthusiasm for Lily. I can't tell if there's more enthusiasm for caramel or for Lily. I have more for caramel, but that's beside the point. And Lily knows that, so we're not breaking any rules there. So in Zoom, um, a couple of things about Zoom, just to make sure that, that we're all kind of working with the same. This is an older, like early in the pandemic slide from the New Yorker about the craziness of life along your kind of pristine Zoom land. You can actually see the craziness of life is, is interfering in the back. Um, but probably now this is more potentially where you're zooming. You might not be in your in your house anymore. You might have grabbed like a quiet bit of Wi-Fi on the campus or or in a, like you you I don't know where you are, but I'm going to imagine that it's it's crazy either in space mental or space physical. Um, so I just want to say I appreciate that, but this is us trying to meet you in an inclusive way during a pandemic in a way that's going to be resilient to whatever changes happen to all of us this term. Because the pandemic's still going, right? There's one in 30, the estimates this week in our province is that one in 34 uh, people that you're sharing space with have uh, COVID. Uh, so this is my uh, strong suggestion to you that wherever you are, wherever you're taking place in this Zoom thing, um, take a look at the uh, people around you and hopefully lots of them are wearing masks and hopefully lots of uh, fresh airs and open windows. And if you haven't got your chance uh, to get your booster, Get your booster. Uh, if you don't know where these came from, these numbers came from uh, COVID Canada's forecast. You can get to this particular one and by scanning that QR code, uh, and I'll post those kind of as the, as that organization updates that feed throughout the course. But let's test out the Zoom thing. Tell I'm in Guelph. We're going to scale. I think most of you are in Guelph with me, but tell me, using your Zoom tools up at the top, jump into the annotate and put a stamp somewhere on the world wherever you are joining us all right i see some of you okay monica well welcome it looks probably sunnier and Haley. wow brandon wow wow hooray okay now to get a sense of i'm gonna thank you for doing that um and let's clear those and we'll jump to the next zoom kind of area so within north america tell me about where you are i saw some variation i think in that last slide lots of us are in the royal city some of you out west so oh, you are so thank you for joining what is that 8 30 that's not so bad the class has been earlier uh it's been 9 30 a.m eastern time at different places different cases this is good all right and uh, this is already Smith deciding to jump into that. Let's go and let me look in Ontario. How many of you are in Guelph? Most, some. Ah, very cool. Is that North Bay that I see one of the spots at? That's awesome. And some folks down on the North Shore of Lake Erie? Long Point? Awesome. <laughs> I just, I happen to glance down at the check and uh, Kay Ruger, my French miner, is screaming at the chat check. Chat check. It's a bilang. Nous sommes bilang dans notre, notre pays. Okay. Uh, let us clear those. Thank you. 
for that. And one more Zoom. Yeah, Franglais, exactement. Good. Is that Turkey Point that I see? Somebody's just clicked on Turkey Point, and what is that port something or other on the just at the elbow of Long Point? Very good. Awesome. And some up near Lake Simpo. Well, well, welcome. So many of us are here. And where your travels take you this term, uh, we you'll be able to reach us. If you can reach the internet, you can join in for our invertebrate adventures. Um, one of the other ways that I might use Zoom is to collect data, to randomly survey you, to ask questions, questions that emulate the kinds of questions that I will ask in any kind of testing. So take a minute like this, this could uh, turn into a histogram where put a marker in all the parts of the world that you have visited. So we've got Quebec, Nunavut, uh, NWT, the United States, United Kingdom, uh, Costa Rica, Dubai, Trinidad, Czech Republic, Czechia, uh, Egypt, Ecuador, Iceland, Indonesia, and South Africa. Oh, Japan. We were just reading, our boys and I were just reading about uh, Japan last night, and they said, let's go to Japan. So I will join you, uh, whoever wrote Japan out in the margin. That's awesome. That's amazing. I think one of the things that one of the things that's apparent from this kind of a physical expression of, of our collective experience is that not enough of us uh, go uh, and travel to the diversity of places represented in our country. Uh, compare the and contrast the frequency of United States versus none of it. A little bit more into the NW team, so that's good. Uh, but there's lots of, I hope, to-do lists for you. Maybe some of you are hoping to take some of the Arctic courses uh, in the future and explore some of those places. Okay, so clear drawings. Next. Now, the other thing that I might do is to ask you to, I'll use Menti for this, but also a blank screen or a white screen. Uh, somebody's taking a, somebody's friend is taking a co-op in none of it right now. That's amazing and dark. Um, now, so tell me about what place. So some of you already done this. You're talking about uh, some of you, was go, somebody was going to Japan. Where else have you gone? Madagascar. Holy moly. That's a for sure. Well done, you. Cuba, Netherlands, Tanzania, New Brunswick, Italy, Italy, Costa Rica. Yes, Costa Rica is the next place for me as well. So this is great. You're you're familiar with this kind of a thing. We've got text. We've got kind of script writing. Um, so this is great. I'm jealous to see all these places. I will live vicariously through you if you do this during the course. Um, and I am happy to see everyone. Uh, so quick off the mark on this. This is uh, this is fantastic. So thank you. I'm going to clear, and I have some more questions. And they are using another kind of these technologies. So this is a poll. This is recognizing a poll using the poll functions. Uh, one of the things that we uh, I might ask you a, a question that models some of the um, the quest, uh, the the testing, the the assessments that we might do, the lecture quizzes. So tell me about um, things that you do, strategies. If there's something that you don't do there, if there's an other down at the bottom, annotate the screen. Uh, what are some of the things that you're doing? Because, and I say this again explicitly, this is not, and this is uh, this is a challenging time, uh, and I want to acknowledge that you're going through and have been going through. A challenging time, uh, and we're going to try and uh, recognize that in any of the assessments that we do, and as we make our learning outcomes inclusive. Yeah, all of the above. Uh, so it looks like out of the list that we've got here, what's the most? 55, 54 percent playing music. Nice. That's good. That's amazing. That's a and comfort food, eating food, plenty of sleep. Yeah, that's so important, eh? Any of those things, hanging out with friends, procrastinating. Procrastinating, I'm gonna put another spin on procrastinating. A lot of times procrastinating is nothing more than procrastinating, you know that, We everybody knows that. But sometimes procrastinating is you fighting with um, allocating importance to you rather than whatever your job being a student is. And that's important, that's, Im that's important that you allocate importance to you. Uh, so procrastination, uh, sometimes is a really important thing because it's you kind of grudgingly saying, 
these other things are important as well in my life and I need to do them. So that is awesome. Thank you for sharing with this. Uh, let's, I'm going to clear these. Let me do one thing first. I'm going to end the poll. Uh, you can see the results there on your screens. And thank you for participating. I'm going to clear the drawings and we'll keep going. And I will look back to the chat, to the Shah. I need a bunch of assignments so I can ignore it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, uh, Zed Push, I, a bunch of assignments on the go so I can ignore the ones that I don't like and do the ones I enjoy. I feel that I, rem I, I definitely, I experience that even in my, my current, I have a, one of my kind of tragic flaws in my job is that I'll often be thrown, my to-do list gets thrown out of whack when new data comes in and I'm like, oh, let's, I want to, I want to graph this. And then it's like, no, Smith, you can graph it later after you've done the thing that you're already told people that you would do or the task that you owe folks. Okay. So I think I'm up to date on the chat. If I'm not, throw something in there to catch me up. Um, so thinking back to the, uh, talking about the lab and the lectures uh, we've already, so this is Sherry. Uh, you've been introduced to Sherry uh, auditorily. You'll meet Sherry next week. Uh, and this is one of the other cool things, and you can keep this in mind if this is a class that really excites you and gets you enthusiastic, is that um, we try and use volunteers from previous incarnations, uh, earlier incarnations of 2700, to come back and help out in the lab and to share tips and tricks and enthusiasm, tips and tricks that they learned along the way and enthusiasms uh, that they have, perspectives that they might have retained from their experience in 2700. Uh, so you'll meet some of those uh, people from previous years in your labs starting next week. So the text, uh, the text should be in the, tell me actually in the chat if, if you've tried to go and buy it already. This is the one, this is Inverter, uh, Brusca et al., uh, the third edition of the Invertebrates. It should be in the bookstore by now. There is, is an option, if you haven't, uh, heard about this, there is an option to rent 180 day rental on a digital version, um, which isn't a PDF, it's an online thing, so you need to be online, um, but it, does have some pluses in terms of using control F. You can search throughout the book uh, in a way that the hard copy doesn't, but I am a nerd and I love the book, so, but this is what it looks like. Uh, and it's a great, big, gorgeous text full of amazing things. And uh, we hope that you enjoy it. Okay. There are other texts, and I'll call attention to this. If I use, ever I use in these lectures drawings from other texts, I'll tell you about it. Um, and those texts, if you're curious about them, you can find them on reserve in the library. There's um, previous editions. This was the edition that um, I, I was taught from years and years ago uh, and that we used to use in this class, and we discontinued, I don't know, half dozen, four or five, six years ago, largely because all of those authors had passed on and the text wasn't being updated. So there's lots of gorgeous, gorgeous illustrations here, but all of the phylogenetic perspective, because phylogenies, as you know, are hypotheses. They change as we add information, and we're adding information uh, to the tree of life all the time. And so the phylogenetic component of this book uh, is is just so much out of date um, that that we switched to the Brusca et al. text. So about the lectures, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, and communicating with me at least this is how to do it uh that's my email salix at uoguelph.ca please put uh zoology 2700 in the subject header so that i can find it uh because um because i get a lot of emails um and my aim is to get back to you within kind of a day but if i haven't send it again uh and uh, that bumps it in my inbox the office hours office hours are in this Zoom space, and they will occur after lectures on Friday in the same Zoom space. So on Fridays at the end of lecture, I will, um, I'll just close the, the mute the mic and, and close the video for a second, get something to drink and get, refresh my coffee, and we'll kind of hang out here if you've got questions or comments, things like that. Uh, there's a discussion board in CourseLink uh, for, we use it largely, certainly CourseLink is important to us for announcements, but we use it for discussions as well. And remember, when you're wondering about questions in whatever format, whether it's email, office hours, course link, all of those things, please encourage yourself to ask the question because you're never the only one who's wondering, ever. 
I just guarantee it, in a class of 200 and 225 people, you are not the only one wondering that thing that you are wondering. So share with the rest of us. Someone else will appreciate it. We use videos a lot, um, and I try and keep all of the ones that we use non-proprietary or, or portions of them so that they're shared on um, on YouTube so that you'll see them. We will share them together, and however our internet speeds allow us to share them, uh, that might be a little jerky. So the uh, the links, the QR codes will be on the lecture slides, so if you can uh, switch your phone to take a look at whatever video is I'm kind of sharing with you in Zoom, and that's lagging. You can go and click on that later on, or you can go and take a look at this playlist uh, at your leisure. And this is kind of most of the videos that we will use throughout the year are here. And so there's hours and hours of things um, later on. So these are not the videos of, of the lectures. These are the videos that we use in the lectures. So both of those things will be on the YouTubes. You've got the course link figured out. Um, remember, one of the things that's coming up, uh, we just received a reminder, so I'm imagining you did too, is that Guelph is switching to, to uh, multi-factor authentication when you log into your email or your course link as well. So please take some time. That's going to be happening later on this month, I think in a couple of weeks. Um, so do... Um, do whatever uh, there there are steps that need to be taken um and that's a that's a security issue for the institution and so uh you don't want to leave that to the last whatever they're asking you to do don't leave it to the last minute because you don't want to have uh your access to your email or to your course link get stranded uh by not taking up that uh, multi-factor authentication so these are kind of the things that are on the website um standard things we use the quizzes a lot for both the labs pre-labs uh and and certainly all of the lecture quizzing uh the tests the exams they are in course link i'll talk about that in a second but these are the learning outcomes from the course and you've seen that if you've seen the syllabus and i just wanted to make the verbs in each of those sentences uh clear that the we try and make them as active as possible and i move right up to the top an appreciation we're not trying to overwhelm you we're not trying to to filter you in this class this is not uh this is not a even though there's this much diversity i take the perspective as an educator as a researcher as a learner myself that the biggest biggest thing you can take from this class is the is the wtf or the omg moments the, of like, oh my God, life is amazing, or what the fractal is going on here? And and that's exciting. And I, uh, I hope that we can uh, share a lot of those exciting things together. The assessments that we will do, the evaluations that we will do, this is, they're in the, co they're in the course outline, but here they are. So there's quizzes of lecture. Uh, there's a kind of a, a scientific naming uh, assignment that we hope is fun. There's a cricket baking challenge, which will definitely be fun. And uh, Sherry will talk about that a little next week. And there's kind of some ongoing lab handouts throughout the term. But it's pretty simple and it's well spread out and there's nothing too large. Um, so a note about the quizzes, because this is probably unlike quizzes unless um, well, if you've in, you have shared time with uh, Dr. Jacobs and or I in 1070. It's very much like that. The course link, uh, the lecture quizzes, there'll be three of them. Um, and they're in course link uh, and they're open book, open internet, online. There's double time and you have a sliding start window. This is kind of a some of the text that appears when considering the very first one that'll happen sometime in early February. But the, the point is that they're appreciating where the, the the craziness of the world the their uh, the design of these is to be more conceptual so there'll be some that will be like literal kind of very few of them will be literally do you remember this thing that i said about this other thing but they will take all of the examples and the taxa that we came from and i have gone into this literature and found other graphs and other examples of things like the taxa that we've talked about like the morphology and evolutionary kind of patterns we've talked about I'll find different examples, and we'll talk about them in a uh, in course link in a multiple choice or a true false kind of environment. I can answer more questions about that as we get closer, but I wanted to put that out in case it helps ease the stress that uh, you're probably having added to your life right now. So the last ten minutes here, I'm going to jump back to the chat for a second. I see some questions right at the top here. Cricket powder, yes, cricket baking, yep. 
Uh, da, 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 da. How long will office hours be after the lecture? That's a great question. I'm sorry I didn't say that. They will be on uh, for an hour. And yes, uh, the intention is that you can use this textbook in future, like in 3700. Finding crickets at this time of year should also become a character. Well, you know, um, this is actually a pretty good so far with the, the lack of snow cover. We've, um, uh, I see that last question that just popped up. Will the final also be on course link in late April? Yeah, the final is not during the exam period. The final is a, the last day of class, the Monday that they've jammed after. Um, yeah, it, it's it's listed in the course outline, but that that third lecture quiz, that is the final exam. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, I'm going to jump into, so this is another way that I might ask quizzes of you or I might ask for participation uh, while we're here and separated but together, separate but together, is using Mentimeter. So go to Menti, enter the code 22474369, and tell me a little bit about why you're taking this class. See some maternal influence. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going to share some of these uh, up in the screen. I mean, in the chat, but you should be able to see. Uh, I think I've just shared not just PowerPoint, but I've shared that monitor. So to learn about cool animals, so it's required for a bunch of you in the marine and freshwater world. A love of inverts, love 1070. Uh, this is the maternal influence because it's required, like nudibranchs, and it's prerequisite. Uh, requirements to proceed to vet school, awesome. Fish biology is a prerequisite, loving biology, love bugs and jellies. Invertebrates are awesome, I agree. Curiosity, invertebrates are awesome. Passionate about biodiversity. This is fantastic. Amazing. Hands-on, looking forward to hands-on things. That's amazing. Took vert, so now I'm an invert. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, awesome. Okay. Let's take a look at, in the last couple of minutes here, some of the philosophy and organization of the class. So that's some of the tech stuff, um, some of the specific things to the class. But when we're talking about this class, there's some kind of unifying features in philosophy. The philosophy I've already delved into, one of them is the appreciation of it. Another is the, if you're interested at all in animal life, you kind of have to, you're obliged to be interested in invertebrates. It's 96% and more of all of the things that we share, that share their planet with us. If you want to think about, if you're inspired by evolutionary relationships and trends, invertebrates. If you're inspired by structure and function, and maybe you're like thinking about going into some kind of engineering future or thinking about bio-inspired solutions uh, in a climate-influenced uh, hum future for humanity, then most of the biology inspired solutions to this planet are invertebrate solutions. I mean, if you're thinking about biomimicry or biomimetics, then you need to understand invertebrates because that's the majority of the species on the planet. That's the majority of solutions to, excuse me, stressful environments. And then very pragmatically, if you're going to take uh, 3700, uh, we talk a lot about the things that we lay the, the kind of the framework for a lot of the things that you'll talk about in 3700. A phylogenetic perspective, an evolutionary perspective is explicit in vertebrate uh, morphology and evolution. Um, I'd even flip those around if I was redesigning the course name. So who are the invertebrates? Well, very simply in this phylogeny, if we think about multicellular things, they are the non-vertebrate animals. So everything in here, so sister to coanoflagellates, we're going to be within this tip of this tree, uh, the tip shown there representing ants, so the non-vertebrate animals. This is some figures talking about uh, trends that I've already delved into, one of them being 
the number of species. Remember the meme of shoveling off the roof? I think it's some Russian roof. But this is a this is an older uh, paper now, thinking explicitly about marine life. But the trends are really uh, called out in that um, highlighted red and bold text. That 250 more than 250 years after we decided upon kind of uh, an, a Linnaean style of classifying animals, that we have probably at least 90% of the animals in the ocean await description. And probably in some environments, stress really, it's more than that. So some of you, and why you're taking this course, you mentioned that you uh, take invert and you love vertebrate zoology. And I love vertebrates. I've shared some of the vertebrates that share my space with you. If you uh, stick with us throughout the term, you'll be introduced to the dairy bush, uh, the fox, the camera that we have in the dairy bush on, um, on fox dens. I love vertebrates as well, but vertebrates to me are very much like, it makes me think of the Game of Thrones and the Dothraki in the Game of Thrones. And I don't know if you'll remember this particular, if you're a fan of the George R. R. Martin, but the Dothraki had a phrase, a saying about things. It is known. It is known. It is known. That's vertebrates, largely. It is known. We know lots of things. And I'm going to keep the Game of Thrones analogy going and say, in the invertebrate world, you know nothing, Jon Snow. We're much more on the other side of the wall. This is a regret kind of a world. We're, we know nothing. So why study invertebrates? I kind of get frustrated when people ask me out, outside of this, the, the realms of this class, excite me to, to defend why you would want to study invertebrates. And that's why I show the, the banging of the head on the desk but largely because they're amazing, because they're the majority of life there, and but also because of opportunity and obligation. Obligation because, as I've touched on already, where you are going to be, we are all going to be living through the consequences of the climate crisis. We are all going to be living through the largest threat to biodiversity and the loss of biodiversity in the planet. So those, we also have tools that let us enumerate and understand the species that share their planet with us. Tools that Darwin and Wallace um, would have drooled over. You have those tools. So we have an opportunity where we're obliged to do it and uh, an opportunity, technological opportunity where we can do it better than any generation before us. So this is another way of looking at that kind of table. This is the torchier or the, the meat pie of life way of looking at why we would study invertebrates. If you're going to study invertebrates, if you're interested in studying animals and you eat, slice into this torchier over the holidays, uh, it tastes like bugs. It tastes like invertebrates. If you're interested in it from an ecological perspective, they are the majority of biomass on the planet. 42%, nearly half of the biomass is just one invertebrate phylum. So that's nearly half the biomass and nearly uh, more than three quarters of the diversity of life in one phylum, in the arthropods. Again, with me kind of proselytizing, uh, with us proselytizing about the importance of invertebrates, and that's if you're interested in biology actively as a conservation scientist, someone whose job it is going to be, passion and job it will be to preserve and to protect, there is an extreme bias in the conservation and the uh, sciences towards vertebrates and plants. And you can see at the, uh, this is kind of histograms or dot plots here of the, the number of papers about, uh, so in a, in a conservation perspective. And you can see most of these are about birds, fish, mammals, secondarily kind of amphibians and reptiles. And then we get a couple of invertebrate groups down here. But remember this group here, the 776, that's 40% of the biomass and three quarters of the diversity. So there's a real correction course correction that has to happen in conservation science. Uh, the umbrella concept, uh, in a nutshell, doesn't work well. And so by conserving vertebrates or one taxa of vertebrates, that's, uh, that's not helpful. That's not necessarily helpful to the invertebrates. Why else? Here's my whirlwind. Three minutes. Why else might you want to take invertebrate zoology so you can tell your parents? Because of parasites, because of medicine because of cures uh, to asthma, because of vectoring of diseases that invertebrates do indirectly, because of medicinal or, or medical processes involved in surgery, microsurgery is still very, very dependent upon leeches, um, because of economics. The value of dung beetles, uh, 454 billion. Artistically, uh, there's some kind of silly ones there, but there's artistically invertebrates contribute much to our appreciation, clearly, 
pollination is an economic uh, force that we are dependent upon and the global sale of crustaceans in the world is 40 billion dollars per year estimated to be ecologically uh, reef building structures corals alone uh, produce these 3d structures that account for 6.7 trillion of the annual global economy so that's four times more than canada corals produce and 17 percent of the protein that humans eat around the world 70 percent of life might be parasitic and we know perhaps only maybe one to five percent of the diversity of parasitoids insects that lay their eggs and develop inside other insects and they dominate global food webs so the insect parasitoid might be the most dominant form of life on the planet co-evolutionary if you're interested in vertebrates if you have a particular group a taxon like birds if you're a bird person there are species specific relatives living on that bird and if we don't know enough about the bird uh, and those other dependent taxa uh, inevitably go extinct this is one example that we'll talk about very briefly but this was the California condor when they brought it in uh, to veterinarians kind of cleaned them up and in doing so sent uh, California condor specific mite species to extinction and then some big picture unity and diversity is that we share we can make these conclusions about these things because we share um, we depend on the same raw materials and we share the same building blocks so that is about where I thought we would get to today um, I'm excited to be here I hope you are too this is the done it all phylogeny this is uh, vertebrates all of the animal tax are here so in taking vertebrate zoology you are here we won't do that one but we will join with us as we sing swing amongst all and climb all of this tree and visit the 30 other branches 30 other phyla amongst this phylogeny so hooray and welcome and uh good luck with the rest of your day take care of yourself take care of each other and i will see you back here on wednesday